Warning, this video contains spoilers for Final Fantasy VII, Remake, Intergrade, Crisis Core, and Crisis Core Reunion. Let's just jump right in. I theorize that there will be two main parties shown in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. I believe at the end of Remake, when we see Zack survive at the end of Crisis Core, the Singularity creates an alternate timeline where Zack is still around, and it's this timeline the main party jumps to after they leave the Singularity. Let me explain how I got that. Here is the classic timeline of Final Fantasy VII and Crisis Core. This is the ideal timeline. This is what the life stream wants to happen. We know from Remake that Destiny, the flow of time, is the flow of the life stream. How events play out in the classic timeline is what the life stream and by extension Destiny wants. The Whispers then, being the arbiters of fate, are sent by the life stream to make sure the timeline plays out the same or close enough to the classic timeline. Whenever there's a moment where it seems like the remake timeline will deviate from Destiny, the Whispers appear to nudge everything back towards the ideal timeline. Aerith can see these beings since she is a descendant of the Ancients, and we know the Ancients are connected to the Lifestream. This is the timeline for the remake. It's basically the same as the classic timeline with very minor differences until we get to the end of the game. It is here we see an enormous swarm of whispers, presumably because events of this timeline have deviated too much from the classic timeline. And because there are so many whispers, the Harbinger is formed. The arrival of the Harbinger gives the impression that this timeline may be compromised and must be destroyed. It can't really be corrected if the Harbinger kills Sephiroth and the main party. But, as we know, the Harbinger is defeated, and its purpose apparently unfinished. We see a confrontation between Cloud and Sephiroth inside the Singularity, in a place Sephiroth calls the Edge of Creation. I believe this is the space in between timelines. Aerith calls the Singularity Destiny's Crossroads. And when she says this, I believe she means the point where timelines cross each other. Destiny being the future that hasn't happened yet, and Crossroads being where timelines intersect. Meaning, you could use the Singularity to cross into another timeline. When Aerith says all these moments and memories, precious and fleeting, they're just like rain rolling off his back. She's saying that to Sephiroth, Time doesn't matter, because he can just use the Singularity and jump to another timeline where he can change events. Now, a Singularity is basically a black hole. In real life, scientists haven't figured them out because they seemingly don't follow the rules of physics. In storytelling though, you can use them to explain things that should not work. You can also use them as portals between places, regardless of time. Initially, my theory was that the Singularity at the end of Remake was the entrance, and the Singularity Xaxes is the exit, meaning the main party traveled back five years to the end of Crisis Core, where we would see what they do during that five year span between games. But after watching that latest Rebirth trailer from Summer Games Fest, I don't think this theory works. In that trailer, we see just after the Singularity, which reporters are referring to as a tornado, the main party being carried away on stretchers, which is weird because at the end of Remake and Intergrade, we see them on their way to the village of Calm, northeast of Midgard. This causes confusion since, as far as we know, the main party was never hospitalized at the end of Remake. We also see that the Singularity shows up for Zack during the Shinra attack at the end of Crisis Core Reunion. There's a lot of whispers in that scene, implying events are deviating from what is supposed to happen. He is supposed to die here, but he survives, and it almost seems like it's because of the singularity. Because events in the past have changed, this would seemingly create an alternate timeline where Zack lives and brings Cloud to Midgard. The timeline would then look like this. This is where my theory comes together. I believe the main party entered the Singularity when they came out. It was in this new alternate timeline where Zack lives. The events of Remake in this alternate timeline happen the same up until the Singularity. The main party from this alternate timeline 
then came out in the first timeline that we played, and they are who we see in the Rebirth trailer, the ones getting rescued and put on stretchers. This could be the darkest timeline, the one where everything goes wrong. The party could be too injured to continue, they could be arrested by Shinra, they could just be flat out dead. This timeline will only be shown at the start of the game to show the player the worst case scenario, and what the real main party will eventually change or prevent from happening. We'll get a cut to black to represent how this timeline doesn't matter for the story. The main party, now in the alternate timeline, will continue through similar events as the classic timeline, like we see in the Rebirth trailer, but Zack will be here too somewhere, and because he's still alive, I'm calling this the hopeful timeline. These two different main parties are the exact same, except they are from different timelines. Physically and mentally they should be the exact same, the difference is we the player follow only one party. From their perspective, after the singularity, nothing is different. But from the player's perspective, we know it's a new timeline because Zack is alive. Zack as well will have no idea he was supposed to die, unless there's a scene with Aerith later on and she decides to tell him. Notice the cutscene at the end of Remake. Midgard looks untouched, but in the gameplay trailer for Rebirth, Midgard is on fire from the damage caused by the singularity. One timeline where Midgard is fine, and one timeline where Midgard is heavily damaged. The scenes with Biggs waking up and Marlene watering her plant at the end of Remake, I would guess are actually in the hopeful timeline. The scene with the alternate main party being rescued after the singularity, that's in the darkest timeline. So, in conclusion, my theory is that the singularity trades two different main parties between timelines. The main party we play as in Remake go to an alternate timeline where Zack is alive, and the alternate main party end up in the first timeline where the worst case scenario happens. The game will only show this alternate party briefly, and eventually in the story, the main party we play as will meet up with Zack. Bonus theory. Since Zack is alive in this timeline, we will get that emotional reunion scene of Zack and Aerith. But I think Zack will actually sacrifice himself to prevent Sephiroth from killing Aerith. We get a sentimental scene of Zack and Aerith reuniting, but we still get an emotional scene of a favorite character, Zack, getting unexpectedly killed. And that's what I think will happen. If you agree, disagree, or you want to talk about something else, let me know below. This was just a quick video I had the idea for while working on my latest one, but I should be back to working on that again now. Thanks for watching.